Hello, it's Robert here, uh, fact checker and science blogger and helping people who are scared of various things for uh, the Facebook group Doomsday Debunked. And this time, it's, it's, well, there's the wonderful news that uh, this, these new vaccines by Pfizer, which is just about to get emergency use authorization with very, very effective and, and the Moderna one as well. But sadly, some people are scared of these vaccines. So first of all, don't worry, you're not going to get, um, going to be, need to be vaccinated probably until late spring 2021 at the, at the earliest, unless you are in one of the very high risk groups. Because it's, it's going to take a while to go through the phase four stages, which is after the phase three, once it's approved. And then, well, basically, what, once it's approved, the next stage is that it's going to be, it's like, just like a clinical trial really, but it's for a much larger number and everyone is vaccinated. And then larger and larger numbers, and then finally it goes out to the entire population probably sometime in the late spring. Um, but then there's this uh, infodemic thing going around that the messenger RNA is going to rewrite your DNA or RNA. And some of the most weird outlandish things they say that there's this one lady on YouTube that is scaring some of our members and he claims, she claims, she just makes up words. She doesn't know the words, what the words she uses mean. They literally don't make sense. You know, it's sort of like saying, I, I don't know, that the, uh, the sea will uh, turn into yellow light because it's a uh, cousin of the Eiffel Tower, something as bizarre as that. Just things she says just doesn't make any sense at all. So anyway, so uh, there's a lot of bad information out there about these vaccines. So what does the uh, what do mass in messenger RNA vaccines actually do? They don't do anything to the cell DNA or to the cell RNA. They uh, so you need to understand a little bit about how the how your cells work. That the DNA in your cells produces these things called messenger RNA, which is a translation from bits of the DNA which then go off into your cells and they go through these things called a ribosome, it's very schematic, it doesn't really look like that. And then the uh, ribosome turns that into a protein. And if I go and turn it to get this going, you can see what it goes there. And then see it repeats every three, it should have to be every three. Uh, Then every three bases, then it'll add another one of those to the to the extending chain of the protein. So it's a set of instructions for making proteins. And did I put it up there? Oh, I didn't. I've got a. I'll bring it over. I've got a photograph for the site that page here. That's got a photograph of a of the actual thing that it produces. So if we go down here, that is what it's, um, that's what's going to produce this little protein, 3D printout of the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2. So as this, uh, what Moderna does, they don't even produce the spike protein, they produce the messenger RNA, which is the instructions to make the spike protein. And so what's going to happen is these, these uh, chemicals they put into your body, they inject into your body, then that's going to, um, it's got lots of instructions going to your cells, they go into your cells and then just lose like all the other instructions that your DNA is producing, but this is not produced by the DNA in your cell. And this message RNA then will tell your cell to produce the spike proteins. And then the message cell can go through several times telling you to make more and more protein. And eventually, it'll just be, and um, it'll just be broken up by normal cell processes, and that's the end of it. And then your cell will produce all these spike proteins. And if I just leave this running, then you can see that it sort of shows you a little bit how it works. And the uh, that's compelled.
cells form cells produce proteins that mimic those part of the plastic in there. See the spike proteins where lots of little spikes come out of all the cells. And that's basically what the message RNA does. Makes all your cells produce lots of these little, these little spikes. And then your immune system recognizes these spikes and they see it'll see this 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 thing which I had on on here, it'll see that and say, oh, that's that's not a normal part of my body. And so your cell will then start um, at attacking it and making it inoperable. Now, the important thing to know is that these little spikes are not able to replicate. They can't do anything. They just look like a bit of the virus, but they're not a virus. And the messenger RNA can't replicate either. It can't make copies of itself. In fact, it's very, very clever the way that the virus is able to replicate because there's nothing in a cell that will actually replicate the virus. Basically, the virus has to make its own replication machine once it gets inside the cell. Because the cell replicates DNA, it doesn't replicate RNA. So basically, the, the SARS-CoV-2 virus will go into your cell and will, will create lots of proteins and things and these will assemble together to make a, a make to to make, be able to replicate the virus. So the virus uses the cell machinery to make a machine to make copies of itself. It doesn't even just use a there isn't something in there that can copy the virus. The virus has to hijack your, your cell and tell it how to copy it. So uh, none of that is actually going on in this situation. These these spikes these spikes don't have enough information to tell your cell how to do a copy. In fact, they don't even have any RNA. They don't have any instructions in them. They're just protein. So there's no way those spikes are going to be able to replicate. The message RNA, all it can do is make spikes. It can't make a copy of itself. It can't make a machine to make copies of itself. All it can do is make the spike, and spike is no use for making copies of the RNA. So the messenger RNA that Moderna is injecting into your body it's just going to make a, a few spikes and then it'll just disintegrate in normal cell processes used be, be worked up into new new components of your cells and you know, just other stuff just broken up into its, its component bits and the spikes then the immune system is going to go around and produce antibodies which stick onto the spikes to stop them working but the spikes aren't doing anything anyway and so within a week or two your body gets rid of all the spikes and gets rid of all the message RNA and all that's left at the end of that is a memory of how to fight off the spike. So this is a very, very clean virus. So the only long-term problem that could be that arises from a messenger RNA virus. So if the short-term ones, it could be that this whole process you know, of getting your cells to to produce the spikes and the spikes going through your body, you know, you could imagine that that could cause some problems of some sort. I mean, presumably less, much less than the virus itself, because it doesn't go very far and it's just producing these little spikes and the cells, uh, you know, not, nothing much is really happening even to the cells. But uh, this, that is, uh, where that's, it's that part of the process where you get this irritation of your body and notices there's something foreign there, it fights against it. So it's not at all surprising you get some reactions in the first few days. In the first few hours, especially the first half after you've just been injected, and some people might get a headache, and some people might get a bit tired, and some people, and quite often you get pain in the injections site, so, so they'll give you some painkiller to help with that. But uh, uh, the the and that they, they will have checked all these. They've checked it's these will be about the safest vaccines that have ever been released, because they're using much larger clinical trials than normal, tens of thousands of people, in order to get results as quickly as possible. The more people you have, the faster you can get results. And they've been able to afford, with all the funding there is, to have huge clinical trials, 40,000 people or more. And so you're going to have much better safety information than you normally would have uh, for the emergency use authorization, which is the first step which is not an authorization to use it generally in the public. And then you get a later authorization to use it more generally. Or in most use, it's use where it's not, it's, it's 
but it could there's an emergency but it's got it's meant for an emergency situation the it'll be later on that you have the really big rollout for lots and lots of people so uh so they could be very safe vaccines now the only problem that could arise really long term for messaged rna would be if your body has it's learned to attack the spikes but the spike was produced by your cell machinery using this messenger RNA. So the big question would be, is there anything else in your body that looks like those spikes? Could the body start attacking itself as a result of learning to attack the spikes? So that's the autoimmune response question. Now, you have that same for any of the vaccines for COVID-19. They're all uh, focused on this spike thing. They're all focused on... on teaching your body to attack the spike. Uh, they could have focused on other things, but we've had a decade of research on SARS, and it's because of that that they knew that focusing on this spike would be a very effective way of doing it. If we had done this a decade ago, we'd have gone down many blind alleys of trying different ways of generating vaccines. But no, they, they, that's partly why they're being so effective and we, we sort of, in a way, expected them to be very good vaccines, and they were very good. We've got nearly 50 in clinical trials, and we've got no safety issues with any of them. Um, none have been detected so far, and because they're all using very similar methods, they're focusing on the spike, because we know from previous research that focusing on the spike is a good thing to do, then uh, it's probable that, uh, that this means that all the vaccines are safe because they're all using such a similar method. And they, they, they give some... So I'm not saying this is an expert, so sometime, hopefully, we get the real experts on vaccines, we get the experts the vaccine. Now, I'm not... I know it's not my subject at all. I'm just reporting what they've said and reporting and reporting to, uh, 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 as much as I can. And then... Uh, so they, they will explain it to you properly at some point, hopefully. But... Uh, uh, that's the, the. They will now be having to to assess this and look at, uh, you know, could there be an autoimmune immune response? So part of that is you have to do screening. So you screen the various proteins that your body needs that might, and look for anything. So you've got very big libraries of all the proteins used in the bodies. So you do a, a kind of search through the libraries to see if there's anything that looks like the spike. And then you also uh, have the have the uh, you need have a, the we've got six months of data from the phase one studies, which were small studies of healthy volunteers. If there was some kind of response to the spike, you'd expect you, know, you, could, you could get something from that after, and six months they they they, they think it's long enough, and two months is uh, um, they they also two months is fine for emergency use authorization. So CDC and they know very well what kind of vaccines they are. And they say that the two months is fine for emergency use authorization, that if you haven't seen severe interactions after two months, which is what they will have for half of those who were immune, were vaccinated, then that means it's a safe vaccine. So as to the details as to how they know that, then that really has to be an expert to explain that. So I'm not going to try and fumble and mumble and you know, probably say things wrong and make mistakes. So... Um, but, but, that, that, but that's what they say. And we have a lot of experience in developing vaccines now. Every decade we, we, are, we are better at making them. And they're not going to do any shortcut. It's not going to be a shortcut in safety. This is the exact same safety. The reason it takes so long normally, reason, uh, the fa fastest was months, I think, five years. Apart from flu, every year they make a new flu vaccine. It just takes a few months. That is because they've done all this testing and all they have to do, they replicate the flu virus in hen's eggs. And then once they've got lots and lots of the virus, they then inactivate it. And they know this process of making the virus and then inactivating it is a safe process. So all they have to do is to make the flu every year. They don't have to do all the testing because they know it's safe. They don't need to do phase three trials every year. So, um, but so you can to, to actually making the vaccine is, is quite a fast process once you know what you have to do. 
And so it's no surprise that they actually managed to make the vaccine so quickly. And it's, in fact, they made it much even faster because the things like the special RNA and the um, process that the Oxford group used um, of using an adenovirus and then changed the spike on it. And uh, they, they've got very fast ways of making these vaccines nowadays. Special RNA, I think, could conceive potentially, which is it faster than the food process. So it's, it's no surprise they made the vaccine so quickly. And the big thing that was so fast was the, and the safety trial is just at the end of the conventional vaccination uh, process. And even then, the phase three, normally with last year's, the reason is because there's so few people that actually have the disease. And it's difficult to recruit people. So, so few, your risk is very low, unless you're in the middle of a pandemic there is risk of dying of the disease or getting the disease even. So you have these clinical trials that go on for years because you've got a small trial, 3,000 maybe. Uh, if you've got 30,000, you, you, can, you can have a much shorter trial. In fact, I think you'd have a tenth of a tenth. You know, if you have 10 times as many people, then you, you can have a tenth of the length of the trial for the same number of infections. And normally you have to do quite small trials because they're very expensive. And then, and then the uh, so, so so you've got speed up with the trials by having these vast numbers for phase three. Also speed up because in the United States, especially Moderna, it was a build up to the election, U.S. election. These cases were doubling in in every three weeks or something. And so the vast numbers, especially as you approached election day, and it, it was no conspiracy, conspiracy. They didn't wait for election for for to denounce the results. It was about the other way around all Trump's um, valleys and, and you know, not wearing a mask and getting people not to physical distancing probably helped towards boosting the numbers and making more people infected. I mean, obviously, if you went to a Trump valley, you're more likely to be infected than if you stay at home and, and don't go out and do any... and if you do the physical distancing and wear a mask. So, in a way, Trump did, maybe, uh, increase and uh, speed up the the process of the vaccine with his rallies is possible. But it wasn't any conspiracy. It, uh, they, they, uh, it was just that there were so many infections. They were running at over 60 infections a week by the time, by, by, by election day. And they only had 150 to do to get to the end of the, of the, of the, of the trial. So so we are, and then you know, the, the, I expect AstraZeneca will probably get results pretty soon too and uh, this Russian one has already uh, got their first results and they are um, very similar to AstraZeneca so anyway that's the situation so you've got nothing to worry about they, they, they will only be doing emergency use if you're one of the people who need emergency use then you you know, you you want it because it's going to protect you from the virus, and you know you've got a very high risk of getting the virus, and and probably be at high risk of severe disease if you're one of these early people infected. And if you're not one of these people who need the emergency use authorization, then by then you'll have hundreds of thousands, and then get on for millions, probably millions, if you're one of the younger people. Then you know, unless you're elderly, they, they probably won't get to you until they vaccinate millions, maybe even tens of millions around the world, even if in the US or the UK, which will get it um, very early on. So there's going to be, as I say in one of my other uh, articles, there's going, to be better, there's going to be better safety data than they've ever had to assess these viruses, these vaccines. So anyway, just to show you this to the lady, who invented messenger RNA, not messenger RNA, invented the idea of um, uh, how to use messenger RNA to produce something inside your cells. And then the, the others went on to, uh, to find out how to make it into a vaccine, make it to your cell to produce spike proteins as a vaccine. And yeah, oh, I talk about autoimmune reactions and there. I've already explained all that. And so that's it. And I, I suggest you go and 
go through here. There's a good short video by the WHO explaining why it's so safe. Um, I've got sound switched off, so I can just show it to you. So I'm a pediatrician Sumia, by training, and I come from India. Uh, and, and I have worked in many different show. settings in India. And she explains. Why I remember I during my training that's, um, the long minutes. line of children I have seen. Uh, with vaccine preventable diseases. I, I, I can never more. forget Probably. the sight of the newborn. The uh, people whose children she used to work with, who, how they, um, how, how vaccines stop them from very serious illnesses and, and death. She was a pediatrician, she looked after young children. So, and it's the same with COVID-19. It, uh, it can be very serious indeed. If the COVID-19 was to spread to the entire US population without being checked, over a million Americans, in fact getting over two million Americans, would die of it. So absolutely we have to stop this thing. So, anyway, meanwhile, take, protect yourself with, uh, with physical distancing, uh, washing your hands, wearing a mask where they say you should, uh, not touching eyes, nose and mouth and so on. I will talk about that in a separate video. So, and if you're scared of these things, do remind you, mind you all, of our Doom City Punk group on Facebook, where we help people who are scared. And also, if, you, if you're a scientist, I mean, if any of you are experts on messenger RNA vaccines, then do, uh, and you've got a bit of time, then do come to our group and help reassure people there that it's, uh, that messenger RNA vaccines are safe. And if you know about this autoimmune response thing, then, you know, it'd be great if we had people there who know about these things, who can explain better, you know, what, why, why it's safe. And uh, anyway, so we, we welcome anyone who wants to help that, anyone who's um, scared. And also, if you're good at explaining things to people, just on a human way, reassuring people. And also, if you happen to um, be good at talking to autistic people, so not just a proportion of us are people, but you may be a quarter of them, which is quite high compared with the general population are autistic people get scared by these things and uh, perhaps a similar number we don't really know are bipolar in the manic phase and the antidepressive phase when you get very su su suicidal also if you're good at talking to people who are suicidal and helping people who are suicidal if you if you and we get people who are all of that you can have someone who is autistic bipolar and suicidal so um, if you're if very good at helping people with these conditions and you're knowing how to talk to them, sometimes need, need very special care to explain things properly to people who are autistic because they need things presented in a certain way. Uh, so that it's easier for, for them to pass what you're saying. For instance, they find hyperbole and uh, and irony and sarcasm almost impossible to pass. So uh, if you are good at helping people like that, again, you are very welcome in our group to help these people. Be sure to read the rules at the top of the group uh, when, uh, when you join because the rules help it to function properly. And well, it's it's why we, we we it's why it's able to work. So anyway, hopefully this helps some of you who are scared, scared of messenger RNA vaccines to realise that they're just only the normal vaccines. They're very new technology, but they're very safe new technology. And um, because even though these will be the first approved messenger RNA vaccines ever, as far as I know, I think they're first approved. They have others in. 
phase one trials, but this COVID-19, I think, will be the first approved vaccine, correct me if I'm wrong. But it's a very, very safe technology, intrinsically safe, because everything that was injected is gone from the body within a few couple of weeks, and all that is left is the memory of how to fight the virus. So it's intrinsically safe, and uh, and they have they've been, of course, look very closely at the safety data, especially with it being a new type of vaccine. But we have absolute experts on this sort of thing, with the WHO, with the CDC in the US. Both of those have teams of experts who will look very closely at this before they finally sign off on the emergency use authorization, which they will do. The CDC is only doing it within a few days. I don't think they're waiting for the WHO. For the WHO, it's a two week process, I think, for the emergency use authorization. So that would be a little bit later. But it's not going to get to you for um, for weeks or months um, unless you are in the one of those groups that are especially uh, at risk. So, hope this helps. <laughs>